What exactly did you do? Because right, my experience with the media city is that is it's nice. And the first time we arrived in Manchester was about nine or ten years ago. We thought the media city was really cool. But then I ended up working two years there at the media city, and I it was it was quite soulless to, so that's to why, stay there. So it, we were lucky enough to be asked for exactly those reasons. It was coming up to the tenth anniversary of the BBC moving in. And it felt a bit a bit soulless. So the first thing that we did there, like we were doing a lot of places, is work on a on a place, what's called a place brand. So a set of values for, for what a place could be. And we worked with a, a local, there was two two of us, a company called Modern Designers and ourselves. We worked we worked together on it. And we came up with a set of values of which um, Media City could have. And it was one of them was about it being to put it, there's a whole list of wording mm-hmm. around this, but to cut to cut it short, it was for it to be a place that was more people friendly, yeah. and, and less about open spaces and just offices and yeah. And, and it, place. It's exactly what it was. Yeah, exactly, so people can hang out there and feel comfortable, and things were happening. We had this kind of phrase for it to always be always on, so that whenever you go there as a human being, there'd be things to to do and and see and take part in. The first thing that we did is this thing called box on the docks. Um, which was a very simple thing during COVID to help out with all the restaurants that were to give them. We, t- we bought sheds and greenhouses, just typical bog standard cheap ones from like B and Q, and worked with local artists who were all. If you remember, artists didn't get any support in in COVID. So, can you mention a few of them? They, well, is, it was a, it was the Islington Mill cohort. So there's a um, Islington Mill is a, a brilliant setup in in uh, in, in Salford, and. We, we went there and, and there was about 12 artists that we got to do something on uh, to customise these, these sheds and things. And that was so that they would up to... Do you remember? I think it was groups of six people could eat together as long yeah. as they were away from other, other people and it had to be outside. So these were outside the restaurants in the public realm. And it just looked so good. It looked... It added that homemade, that gritty element to all those glassy blocks and the BBC and everything. And then it brought the artists from the mills, from Islington Mill, which is, there's a big difference between how that area of Salford feels and how Media City feels. And it always felt like never the twain shall come together. That brought that together. The people who who were working there loved it. People from outside Salford loved it. And then we realised, okay, if we do things that are are kind of more gritty, it, it it can start to change this place. So, so the, ne- the next thing was, was we, we were great believers in if you create a big event, an annual event or something like that, and it's like, oh, and you invite thousands of people to come and experience a place mm-hmm. and, and you just fill it with ideas and things, some of those ideas stick all year round. Mm-hmm. And we've done that very successfully with, we were the co-founders of the Festi- National Festival of Making in Blackburn, the mm-hmm. Festival of Thrift up on Teesside. Vintage by the Sea in Morecambe, First Light in Lower Stuff, Classic Car Boot Sale. All of these are either a combination of ones that we are sit on the, the community interest company boards or we own some of them and, and own the brands and run them ourselves. A whole series of, of those things that we do as part of the events and placemaking team here. So we'd got the experience of that. And, and, and we, so we got a lot of brains together, some from the BBC, some from the Salford Uni, some from the Lowry and all the partners of Media City and said, what could we do here that could be an annual event that belong, that could only take place? Because a lot of our events, maybe we get the chance to talk about them after, could only take place in the, in the place that they happen in because the, the, the kind of DNA of that place only allows would only allow that they don't they can't go anywhere else and we thought could we do something that could only take place because it had never had an event that really really resonated with the Salford community with the BBC incoming community with with Stretford across the water it ne- didn't it never had that it never had something that the whole of the conurbation of, of Greater Manchester and wider and, and the region would ever really want to come all at one time and that's a big ask but something amazing happened in a meeting. There was somebody from the BBC who said, I was watching Who Do You Think You Are, which is that programme where they trace the lineage of people. And mm-hmm. Sir Ian McKellen, um, you know, the famous British actor, had said that his great-grandfather had worked and was from Salford or had worked in Salford and that he campaigned for the rights for people to have 
Saturdays and the weekend off, and 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 it, and it was the first in the world to to arrange for people to have Saturday off. So basically, the weekend started here, and I said, "Is this right?" I said, "So the inve- the weekend was invented here." And we got on the internet. And we found out this guy called Robert Lowe's in 1843. Sure enough, campaigned for workers' rights in the in the textile mills of of Salford. And the reason why football kicks off at Saturday afternoon is because that's when, for the first time at three o'clock, traditionally, because that was because that was the first time that anybody had ever had Saturday workers had ever had Saturday afternoon. Oh. And we're looking at this and saying, if this really is the place that invented the weekend, the value in that is crazy. So we we kept researching. We, the next thing we could find was Henry Ford five years later in Chicago had had, had done the same thing and. So we got Salford University, some scholars there to start to, and historians to check because we, I just knew we were onto something amazing, but you can't just assume it. Mm. And lo and behold, we got all the proof we needed. That place owns the weekend. So we came up with We Invented the Weekend and a festival, and a festival that was all about the joys. You know, every, unless you're working all weekend, you look forward to the weekend, you know, even if you're on a business, you can't wait till those emails stop coming in at around mm-hmm. six o'clock or mainly stop coming. Although they don't sometimes. Yeah, but but the the, the volumes go yeah, massively yeah. down at six o'clock on a Friday, a bit earlier than that nowadays. And so we thought, right, we're we're gonna own the weekend, we're gonna create a festival called We Invented the Weekend, and it's happening, and it's happened, and it's happening, it's, it will always happen now, because it's such a good subject matter. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a festival, I think sixty thousand people turned up at the first one. Uh, where you can experience what people do at a weekend and try things yourself and show off what you do at a weekend. And the breadth of it is absolutely, it's massive. It's just, it's everything we do with, we call it the the festival. It's We invented the weekend, the festival of free time. And it's just what you do in your free time, as long as it's legal. It's make me, making me want to, to go back there because we haven't been uh, at the Media City for ages. Well, it's yeah. changing, you know, and, and we at it's, the moment... Um, even Quayside shopping centres changing. You know, mm-hmm. um, charity supermarkets in there. There's a great food hall in there. Young Is there people, a food hall? Yeah, great food hall in Quayside now. Yeah. And and it's um, and young people are moving in there. There's, and it's just it's starting to feel a very different place than mm. than when we started working there in 2016, I think it was, or 2017. It's, it feels a very different place now. Cool. And that's what placemaking is. It's about people doing stuff. And enjoying a place. 